Hey there again, this is Dan, back with another Book of the Week review. This week we're reviewing the book Program or Be Programmed by Douglas Rushkoff, which is a book about the idea that the digital world that we live in has started to influence the way that we think. Now, I picked this book up very randomly. I was just in the bookstore one day, looking around in the technology department, and found this little book. It's only small, it's only a couple of hundred pages, but it really makes you think about the way that you use technology and the way it might potentially be using you, or more to the point, shaping your experience of the world. Now, Douglas Rushkoff is an author of several books, particularly on technology. He's also a voice on NPR radio, and also on PBS. He does a few documentaries and television shows, so you might know him from some of those. He's an excellent writer and thinker around technology and was one of the first early adopters of you know, the electronic media and getting involved in technology in a big way. So he's got a great grounding in this world and he's very intelligent, very insightful, well worth listening to. So in the book, Rushkoff has 10 different commands, things that he recommends that we do to actually change the way we experience technology rather than having it just force an experience onto us. So I want to share a couple of the key ideas that I learned from the book, hopefully that will get you thinking and encourage you to read the book for yourself and maybe change your own mindset. The first idea that Rushkoff talks about is that the elite in society, the people who really control things nowadays, are the ones who program technology. If you think about it, technology shapes so much of our world now, from the way we live and communicate and everything we do really, that the ones who create the programs underneath the technology are the ones who are creating the most influence. Rushkoff likens them to them being the drivers while we're the passengers in the car. And this is an important point. If we don't know how things are programmed or how to program technology, you'll find that you're really at the mercy of those who decide to program it for us. Probably one of the most important ideas I learned from this book was the idea that technology Technology waits for us. Now, if you're like most people these days, you've probably got very used to using cell phones or email or internet search, and you find that more and more we're kind of bombarded by technology and updates and things that want our attention. Now, what's funny is that it's actually not the technology that's bombarding us and asking us for attention. It's people on the other side of the technology. Those people are sending us the emails and the updates and the tweets and the, the messages and things like that, and we are consciously choosing and sometimes almost unconsciously now choosing to answer those immediately. Now, we can choose how much we do that. If you send someone an email, they consciously choose when they respond to it. And it's the same in reverse. If someone texts you or calls you or emails you or whatever it is, you can choose when and how you're going to respond. You can also choose when and how much you're online. If you want to be online all the time, that's okay, but it comes with a consequence. There's distraction. If you choose to do it at certain times of the day, it gives you more power and freedom in the way that you live your life. Another interesting insight that Rushkoff has is that we tend to fetishize objects these days. So when a new phone or a new computer or something comes out, we tend to really lust after that technology for some reason. We really want to have that for ourselves. And he believes it's actually because we've got used to technology delivering such amazing sensory experiences. So you think about all the uses you have for a computer these days. You can talk to friends, you can surf the web, you can gain information, you can listen to music. All those different sensory experiences are available to you directly through that computer. Therefore, when a newer, better, more exciting exciting computer comes out, we want it because we want all those experiences. Yet we forget that it's the experience that we're after. We actually think it's the technology that we want. And it's a huge difference. And you see this, you know, in huge lines at stores when new technology comes out, people rushing in to buy it because they think that that's going to deliver a better sensory experience to them. But over time, they almost forget that and become enamored just with the technology itself. It's a very interesting insight. And I don't know if it's something you've felt in your life where you've started to desire and almost lust after technology. I've certainly felt that at times myself. So it's something to think about. Is it the experience that we want or is it the actual physical technology? The next idea is that technology gives us access to so much information that it's almost overwhelming. Now you've probably found this yourself over the last couple of years because of sites like Wikipedia or Google News or whatever, you're able to source so many versions of the same story or the same information that you start to just pick through and sift. Now, Rushkoff likens this to the difference between reading a book and reading a magazine. If you ever pick up a magazine, you tend to flip through and decide what is not worth reading and what is worth reading, whereas a book you tend to read as a whole source of information from one side to the other. So the difference here with the web and access to so much information is that we become almost like deletion 
readers. We tend to actually omit what we don't want to read. We say, no, I'm not interested in that. No, I don't want to read that. We delete and click off and move away from something where we miss sometimes valuable information. Another great insight is the idea that technology really revolutionized communication. And because of this, because of the ability to communicate in so many ways, Rushkoff says that we're losing the face-to-face -face communication that we used to have. And this is an interesting insight I've noticed in my own life. I tend to text or message or email people more than I would actually pick up the phone and call them. And I don't know why that is. It's just something that I've naturally fallen into. I don't know if you find that in your own life as well, where people tend to actually communicate with long distance technologies, even though they're very close to each other. Why is that? Because it's easier, because it's less confrontational, because it's what everybody does. But is it the right way? I don't know. It's another in instance of being programmed to do something a certain way without really thinking about it. And it's something that I've started to change in my communication with people because of reading this book. The final idea that I wanted to share from this book is that the more user-friendly an interface becomes, the more seamless it is to use that technology, whether it be a phone or a computer or a TV or whatever it is, the less control we have over the way it runs. Now, I'm not a component of open source versus closed source. I'm not trying to get into that argument, but I am trying to share the idea that because something becomes easier to use doesn't necessarily mean we have control of it. It's actually being programmed to be easier for us, but at the same time, it's omitting choice for us. Now, computers are written in binary code. It's either a yes or a no, a one or a zero. And so programmers have to make those choices when it comes to creating websites and different technologies Technology, they have to include things and they have to omit things depending on how they want to do it. So we have to think about is the technology that I'm using, even though it may be user friendly or simple or the most convenient, is it actually giving me what I need, the, the kind of information or the kind of um, affording me the kind of lifestyle that I want? It's a very interesting insight, one that I really recommend thinking about when you're using any technology. So overall, this book, as I said, it's a very small book, very easy to read. It has 10 different ideas to share. It's fantastic to get you thinking. It's really changed the way I think about technology and the way I've started to evolve as a technology user. So check it out when you can. Program or Be Programmed by Douglas Rushkoff.